Now, if you are unwell, what will we do? Do we go back to that mechanic because he did a very good job on our vehicle or do we choose the doctor to get treated? We choose the doctor, right? I hope everybody agrees with me on this situation. Friends, we the distributors of Vivido's Wellness are really lucky to have Dr. Chella with us today, who is not only the head of our research unit, but also a practicing physician with 23 years of expertise in the medical world. Today, he's here with us to educate us and to impart his precious knowledge and experience in regards to the disease and the disease conditions. And not only that much, friends, he's also here to tell us how our Vivitos health supplements can help us to overcome these disease conditions over a period of time, and at the same time, how we can prevent it also. We can very well call our Dr. Chella as the savior of mankind against diseases. So without taking much of the time, let me welcome Dr. Chella for today's topic, uh, polyarthritis. So over to you, Dr. Chella. Thank you, uh, Mohanamala. Thanks for the introduction, nice introduction. Uh, Vividos morning to all uh, family, family members who have assembled here for this uh, wonderful program today, uh, Freedom Oration 163. And uh, let us uh, get into it, the topic straight away. On behalf of uh, Vividos Management, CEO, COH and VP and myself, I once again welcome you all uh, for this great day. Okay. Coming to the, uh, say, uh, our uh, regular uh, update regarding COVID-19, uh, today uh, India had uh, achieved a uh, pinnacle on the wrong side. Uh, so we have uh, reached the highest number of uh, COVID uh, uh, patients per day, 77,000 patients just for yesterday, and it's, it's on race. Uh, whereas in comparison, uh, the other two countries which have been uh, affected by COVID in a large scale, uh, USA and Brazil, is uh, they are controlling the disease very well. Uh, there are uh, many lacunas and particularly the education, which is uh, very, very important uh, in uh, restricting uh, the spread of the disease. I feel, I feel, personally, it's my personal opinion, personal feel that we Indians, in spite of education, we are not following the basics. Uh, that's the reason the disease is spreading like wildfire. And uh, the another reason is that the environmental influence, the plenty of rains have started across the country. And this itself will cause uh, the viral spread easier. And uh, to make the things worse, uh, in coming months, coming weeks, the temperature is going to drop the environmental temperature is going to drop and which will be uh, ambient for the COVID-19 virus. Say once we are less than 26 degrees, the environmental temperature, it becomes a flourishing environment for the COVID-19. Uh, even uh, it, it, uh, in situation like uh, somebody is sneezing or coughing, the virus uh, can suspend, get suspended in the air for quite a while. Say when some other people cross the uh, same spot, it's easy that they will contract the disease uh, airborne. And that's a possibility when the temperature is uh, going below 26 degrees. And uh, uh, in South India, currently it's around 35 degrees in the higher uh, daytime. And the lowest is somewhere around uh, 25 and 26 in the night time. But still, uh, in few places like Bengaluru and uh, other uh, places, such areas, the temperature is dropping down drastically day by day. And in another, another week, uh, few weeks time, the temperature will, the upper uh, temperature of the daytime temperature will hit only around 25, 26. And that's going to be a real danger. So these are the uh, components which is going to affect uh, uh, the uh, spread of the disease as well as, as well as very importantly, uh, the discipline of each and every Indians is important. Once we are disciplined, there is less chance that uh, uh, COVID will spread. If you are not disciplined enough, we know, we all know, almost uh, India, uh, in India, the because of social media, uh, people have got enough knowledge now, enough knowledge about COVID-19, 
and we have uh, done a lot large scale uh, see education regarding covid-19 what to do what not to do what is the disease how it uh, affects how uh, it's going to uh, hit us very hardly and how can we prevent those things? everything we have educated but still there are plenty of people who are getting affected day by day in our close circle itself and uh, i told you already during my last oration it's going to be somewhere say we are uh, nearing about uh, 1 lakh per day and it's going to be uh, say somewhere in the uh, amount of around 10 lakh people getting affected with covid-19 in another about 2 months time and that is the projection given by uh, the uh, body government body the research body uh there is a high possibility when the uh, temperature winter temperature peaks that's uh, when the lowest temperature is going to there is a, a cold wave in whole of the country in north uh, particularly in the north india there is very high chance uh, covid is going to be like a wave and uh, be cautious about it and before that we need to safeguard our family members we need to safeguard our all indians uh, all uh, people across the globe what to do what to do yes you need to be aware you need to be reinforcing the same awareness repeatedly for your family members don't be reluctant don't be complacent don't even a fraction of minute uh, complacency might get us into trouble see uh, just because relatives are there don't think uh, disease won't spread it's a very wrong notion don't think that just the family members are there around it will not spread no somebody in your family can be a spreader somebody in your family can be a carrier so they are a mask when you are at home when there is more than three people at home always do wear a mask one thing and even in the office environment don't think everybody is close to you everybody is a colleague to you just because of that you will not get a disease a spread from them anybody i repeat anybody can be a carrier anybody can be a spreader anybody can be a super spreader also they may not have any symptoms they may not have any uh, say uh, prodromal symptoms that is ideal for covid-19 so this is the hinge this is the uh, uh, say point we need to understand so when you are in office when you are in uh, a group uh, within the closed circle known circle don't hesitate to wear your mask always wear a mask uh, in the day time whenever you go out of your house and if the house is crowded if it is a small house for yourself always try to wear the mask to make sure save god yourself and to save god other family members also particularly the elderly people and next always have uh, virun in hand and this is very very important plenty of data plenty of uh, testimonies are coming now in past about two weeks time uh one small example one of my uh, close circle who has been under uh, treatment of uh, in the covid care center uh, he by himself has uh, uh, say asked for the virun and has taken virun on day one the count was in one drop of saliva it was around somewhere around 100 crores virus in a single drop of saliva uh, before starting with virun and after that by day 10 it has come down to completely it has come down to just 500 virus uh, viral particles in one drop of uh, saliva so this is the change the biggest change it has uh, in spite he had a respiratory uh, symptoms everything gone off and he is uh, completing the course by uh, tomorrow sunday and uh, this this kind of inputs plenty of inputs are coming in and in spite it is only a, uh, say general immune uh, uh, wellness product and respiratory wellness product it is doing a uh, plenty of uh, support for uh, uh the uh, people who are uh, undergoing uh, viral infection and that's good news for us all of us and uh, uh, there are plenty of uh, so we can't claim it as a uh, treatment we can't claim it as a uh, medicine for uh, covid-19 no and it is a supplement nutraceutical uh, supplement nutrition supplement which is aiding which is supporting the our human body to cope up with the stress whatever the stress the virus is loading on us and as simple as that and it's uh, helping us to save lives and this is what all about virun okay coming to the topic today's topic uh the polyarthritis is a multiple joint pain and we have already discussed about uh, rheumatoid arthritis uh, rheumatoid arthritis in detail i have uh, spoken during our uh, uh, first lockdown first and second during second lockdown also 
but uh, there are uh, big area say in pali arthritis uh, almost about 30 to 40 percent of the uh, volume is uh, taken care by the rheumatoid arthritis but remaining uh, almost uh, 50 to 60 percent of uh, the uh, percentage of patients with uh, multiple joint pain comes under uh, different different categories which i am going to discuss with you and i will help you to uh, say i will guide you how to take care of it how to manage it properly also uh, of course uh, there are uh, plenty of things to be discussed it might take about uh, an hour uh, approximately one hour so be ready and uh, simple things simple simple things first okay what is arthritis art is a joint itis is inflammation and poly is multiple say many joints having inflammation or swelling or warmth or pain or tightness all these are uh, put together in, into a inflammatory joint disease we call it as poly arthritis <clears throat> usually poly arthritis is of uh, doesn't comes under the degenerative joint diseases degeneration because of wear and tear uh, multiple joints getting affected is very less chance only option is it uh, oa hand osteoarthritis hand joints are usually multiple in number uh, multiple joints are affected uh, but uh, for the sake of uh, our convenience uh, discussion today we are focusing only on the inflammatory joint disease wherein the joints affected are swollen it has warmth it has pain it is painful and it has tightness also these are the categories which we are going to discuss and how to deal with it how to uh, say uh, handle it handle the situation and with the persons with uh, polyarthritis that's what i am going to discuss with you all today okay uh, i am leaving out comfortably uh, the rheumatoid arthritis component because we have discussed in detail Uh, during our uh, previous oration and today uh, say i will start with uh, uh, the uh, say different types of uh, this poly arthritis other than rheumatoid arthritis and uh, uh, zero negative uh, uh, arthritis poly arthritis is one condition where uh, when you do a rheumatoid arthritis it will be negative when you do a, uh, say uh, hla b27 Uh, that is for ankylosing spondylitis it will come as negative it will not show any uh, positivity for the disease and uh, any other uh, say uh, components which we are going to test it will show as negative but there will be multiple joint swelling pain and tightness three components four components particularly so there will be uh, inflammation there is a swelling second will be there will be warmth when you feel it it will be warmth third it will be uh, basically a, a pain a severe pain will be there and the fourth will be a stiffness tightness or stiffness when you get up in the morning or when you uh, get up out of rest for about half an hour to one hour it will be tight and you will not be able to uh, move the joint these are the major components these are the four major components uh, with uh, the inflammatory joint diseases ideally five but uh, to make you understand for a non medical person the four components are very crucial okay the apart from this wherever the joint may be it can be in the uh, small joints in the hand it can be in the knuckles it can be in the wrist joints or in the elbow joints or in the shoulder joints or in the uh, foot joints ankle knee joint or in the hip joints any joints when there are more than two joints are involved we always call it as polyarthritis multiple joint pain and inflammation simple to understand okay how to differentiate what is that what is this and there are uh, say uh, in rheumatoid arthritis i have told you already say uh, morning stiffness what all the uh, symptoms which i told you now plus additionally the morning stiffness will be more than uh, for uh, at least for more than an hour Uh, which will differentiate it into a, a definite uh, rheumatoid arthritis clinically but there are blood tests available which will uh, help guide us to make it uh, sure rheumatoid arthritis when the rheumatoid arthritis factor ra factor is negative and uh, uh, then we need to think of other things also it can be zero negative polyarthritis or zero negative spondyloarthropathies where the spine is also involved 
uh, or it can be a post viral uh, arthritis or it can be uh, even in kind of uh, say typhoid in case of uh, typhoid illness uh, it can cause after the typhoid infection has gone uh, it can cause a reactive arthritis where there will be multiple joint pain usually the wrist joint elbow joints and knee joint and ankle joints are involved not the small joints small joints are the joints in the in our hand the uh, the distal interphalangeal joint dap joints and this is the uh, uh, say proximal interphalangeal uh, interphalangeal joint the metacarpophalangeal joints so uh, these are the joints where uh, there are multiple in number and uh, usually uh, two or three fingers are involved and you will not be able to uh, grasp anything in the morning once you get up in out of the bed if you know, for to want to hold your brush or if you want to hold a uh, handful of water you will not be able to do that and uh, the, even the movements will be very tight something like something has been tied the all the joint has been tied or with a rubber band it will be so tight and it will be warm in the morning and it will be painful also uh, even a small movement will be very painful so these are the uh, things which uh, we always uh, consider it as a polyarthritis multiple joint uh, pain and in the case of uh, uh, say uh, spondyloarthropathy in case of uh, uh, zero negative spondyloarthropathy where um, uh, the uh, spine is also involved the spine spinal joints also are, are all in, involved so let us uh, categorize it as a one part of this uh, polyarthritis i told you it can be a viral infection which is leading to a uh, multiple joint pain it can even covid also it, it has been seen there or it can be a simple typhoid infection which has led to a reactive arthritis or it can be a general any other viral or any other bacterial infection happening in the gi tract or in the urinary tract that is causing a reactive arthritis and this is this is very very common very common people think it is a rheumatoid arthritis and they get into uh, start putting on the steroids and it will not resolve at all and uh, no nothing required for those things here you need to read the read the cause whatever the uh, treatment uh, say if there is a ty- typhoid infection you need to treat the cause you need to treat the typhoid properly and then handle the uh, reactive arthritis because of the typhoid infection salmonella infection or it can be a viral infection any viral infection uh, say uh, maybe a flu maybe a, a gi tract endo uh, say uh, there are plenty of uh, viruses available plenty of uh, varieties of virus available which can affect our human body including uh, covid 19 plenty other viruses once it comes into our system uh, it creates a mimicry and it uh, it goes off after about two weeks time it goes off but what happens our body own immunity thinks uh, the uh, our joint synovium wherever there is a joint there is a, a kind of a, a rubbery consistency we call it as a synovium there there are plenty of proteins available uh, these proteins are uh, uh, say somehow uh, the our body own uh, mechanism immune mechanism thinks it as a virus thinks it as a foreign body and starts attacking on the uh, synovium and that causes a swelling that causes inflammation that causes a redness that causes warmth that causes stiffness all this is because of the uh, say uh, say kind of a mimicry work that has done by the virus previously and it creates a uh, say uh, wrong uh, ideology to the immune system and the immune system thinks these our own synovial uh, membranes or our own cartilages Uh, as a foreign body as a foreign element or a foreign virus and it is being attacked by our own wbc white blood cells this is the whole concept behind uh, uh, polyarthritis as well as the uh, reactive arthritis and it is all basically inflammatory joint diseases and it is very true in case of even hla b27 or we call it as uh, ankylosing spondylitis there are two varieties where Uh, the one type starts from upwards from the jaw and goes downwards in the spine and the other variety starts from the sacroiliac joint and moves upwards towards the upper part of the spine and all these varieties there are more than two joints involved more than one joint involved it is polyarthritis poly is many more than one so we for our convenience we take it as more than two joints involvement is we call it as polyarthritis infective causes say something like tuberculous um, arthritis 
it's very, very uncommon to cause multiple joint inflammation. Usually it is on one joint. It can be in the knee joint or weight-bearing joints or uh, high, high movement joints where uh, the wear and tear is more and the infection chance of this tuberculous infection getting settled there because of high uh, vascularity and uh, it can cause uh, catastrophe for that joint. Usually, uh, the uh, tuberculous infection hits only one or two joints, maximum of two joints at a time. And uh, apart from, uh, just we will leave out those infective causes. The viral, uh, salmonella typhoid, typhoid, post-viral uh, arthritis, and uh, other kinds of, all other kinds of infection leading to a, a reactive arthritis, as well as this ankylosing spondylitis, I'm going to uh, talk one by one. Okay. So, we have seen... All these polyarthritis will have these uh, five basic characteristics and uh, it's easy to identify. And when there is no redness or warmth, uh, it itself restricts the, uh, say, condition as a non-inflammatory or it can be a degenerative. We generally call it, call it as osteoarthritis where there is only degeneration because of wear and tear and there, is, there usually won't be any warmth, uh, heat, heat in the joint or redness in the joint, around the joints. And uh, and even the uh, tightness is only because of fluid accumulation, rather not because of the uh, swelling happening from the synovium. So this simple fonda, you can identify all the joints, whichever is warm, whichever is hot or warm, uh, red and uh, painful, and it has more tightness, then you categorize this into inflammatory arthritis. So what to ha how to handle it? It can be from the mandible, uh, mandible, mandible joints, uh, temporomandibular joints here in the uh, jaws, or it can be in the neck part, it can be in the shoulder joints, it can be in the elbows, or it can be in the wrist joints, or in the hands also. Same way, in the spine, uh, the spine joining into the pelvis, we call it a sacroiliac joints. Uh, it's a most commonly involved in ankylosing spondylitis, where you'll not be able to turn, you'll not be able to bend forward and raise up, it will be like, you will be like standing still only. You can't even bend your head down. It will be tight. All the uh, spine joints will be tight. And the other category uh, where the joints, lower uh, body joints also can get involved. And this, these are the uh, situation. All the inflammatory uh, joint diseases, the polyarthritis, particularly the uh, inflammatory arthritis, uh, can be uh, categorized into one big category where the management is uh, in almost nearing the same. And one more category uh, we can add here is the uh, gout, gouty arthritis. It is also kind of an inflammatory arthritis because the, of the accumulation of uric acid in the joints and the initial days, it affects only about one or two joints in the lower extremity. But as the uh, years progresses, when the uh, uric acid levels are not in the normal levels, then other multiple joints, the weight-bearing joints, gets affected easily and this leads to a very very agonizing pain and very difficult uh, condition to be treated this gout or the high uh, uric acid we call it as a rich man's disease and because uh, when there is more alcohol more alcohol more protein uh, non-vegetarian food and uh, more of uh, pastas high rich uh, sweet items when people start taking this when they are rich, they uh, opt for these things. So what happens? The uh, riches usually uh, gets loaded themselves with the uric acid levels, high uric acid levels, and which in turn, the uric acid uh, gets into the synovial fluid, becomes crystallized like a sand, sand particles, and where the joint surface should be very smooth and it should be gliding, but uric acid gets into the joints and becomes crystallized and if, they, if you put a uh, sand into a bearing, what happens? The same situation happens inside the, happens inside the joints, uh, particularly the lower leg joints, and it causes swelling and pain, agonizing pain. And uh, this is uh, uh, particularly uh, true with uh, uh, the gout, gouty arthritis. So all these are categorized into, uh, say, inflammatory arthritis. There are plenty other reasons. So it's a more commoner. And uh, what to do? As, as usually, as usual, I always say there are five things to be followed. Uh, you have identified this as a uh, polyarthritis, particularly the inflammatory arthritis. I'm now going to talk about the viral diseases. Any viral infection causing running nose 
or sore throat or it can be a loose stools for one or two days or it can be a just a fever and body pain for one or two days and then multiple joints becoming very tight and very warm and all these symptoms if it is there we call it as post viral reactive arthritis in this situation in this situation what to be done uh, if it is a post viral if at all a viral most of the viral diseases are self limiting it goes off it comes into the body it uh, develops itself it grooms itself in a very faster manner and goes out of the body in uh, uh, about 2 weeks to 3 weeks time and uh, remnantly it, it makes the body to uh, say uh, does the damage by itself so here we can't do anything except to reduce the immune level immune response uh, in pali arthritis particularly the post viral reactive arthritis the second component i was talking is uh, particularly in case of a typhoid in salmonella infection after the infection if you fatally have been diagnosed to have typhoid and the typhoid arthritis it usually causes multiple joints to be inflamed and painful and the tightness also will be there minimally in that situation if you have, if you have been diagnosed to have typhoid and the joint pain has started treat the typhoid properly and once you treat the typhoid properly for the 15 days then so on full course of medicines need to be done we don't have the option with ourselves in vivitos but i'm just educating you make sure you take the proper medications from your family physician family doctor and uh, get it done completely and the pain will start coming down second third uh, i talked about uh, first i told you the viral uh, reactive arthritis second is the typhoid third is uh, gouty arthritis where uh, the importance is that importance is in the two ways either you need to reduce the production of uric acid level high protein uh, uric acid inside our body or you need to help the body to expel more uric acid from your body you have to guide you have to help what to be how to be done there are medications available of course uh, i am not talking about it so i am going to talk only about reducing the production of uric acid inside our system how first thing you need to restrict your alcohol intake you have to restrict your high sugar intake and you need to restrict the, uh, particularly there are gouty foods you can just google it it will, will show you what are the gouty things whichever uh, there is some uh, say we call it as pulip in tamil uh, tamarinds and tomatoes there are few uh, particular uh, foods food items which are very very uh, say uh, say it can promote or it can generate more uric acid in our system so this uh, gouty foods has to be restricted you have to reduce or stop taking alcohol you have to restrict uh, uh, say high glucose or high sweet content foods that's very very mandatory and this will make sure the production of uric acid comes down uh, gradually and in the same time we can expel more uh, uric acid from our system that's with the help of oncoban o2 oncoban o2 uh, say take a normal uh, dose of uh, two capsules per day and one sachet per day uh, initially for about 3 days and then uh, re- increase the dose to twice the dose morning two capsule evening two capsules and morning one sachet evening one sachet for about next 5 days and then revert back to the original one sachet per day and two capsules per day continue it for about one month it will help promote uh, expelling the excess uric acid from our system and make sure the uric acid levels are within the normal limits and here too the oncoban plays a crucial role uh, in uh, uh, taking away the excess salts and helping the renal system uh, the glomerular uh, glomerulus to uh, expel the adequate uh, uric acids so that the uh, blood uric acid levels are maintained within very well within the normal limits and this in turn reduces the uh, inflammation in the joints as well as oncoban o2 has the capability to reduce the oxidative stress in spite there is a crystal formation inside the joint it helps to increase the synovial fluid secretion that dissolves the uh, the crystal formed inside the joint and helps to reduce the damage done on the joints and this is very crucial in case of uh, salmonella typhoid uh, post typhoid uh, uh, arthritis polyarthritis 
as well as in the uh, viral uh, polyarthritis, post-viral reactive arthritis, O2, oncoban O2 plays a very, very crucial role in stabilizing in the uh, immune response so that the immune uh, system does not uh, hits against our own body system and it literally covers the uh, synovium with the proper coating and prevents any damages done by our own system of uh, system uh, WBCs. And these are the uh, very important thing which need me to understand. Apart from that, general category, all the reactive arthritis, all the inflammatory arthritis, all the polyarthritis are having a peculiar uh, function, peculiar things together, all together. What need to be done? I always say five things to uh, take home. Uh, the first component is always, uh, say, food. In this, any of these inflammatory arthritis, we are removing the causative or uh, causative reason. Say, if it is a salmonella typhoid, treat the typhoid properly, the causative issue is gone. If it is a viral infection, the virus uh, uh, goes off. We need to wait for the viral infection to settle. And uh, you can have the help of uh, oncoban O2 which will uh, help the viral load to be reduced in uh, quicker uh, time. And uh, apart from that, uh, the food, food is the important uh, component which we need to take care. In particularly in all the polyarthritis, inflammatory arthritis, we need to restrict the intake of protein. Let it be chenna, let it be green gram, it, let it be black gram, let it be uh, horse gram, or paneer, or fish, or mutton, or beef, or chicken, whatever it may be. High protein intake will help the immune system to build faster and, uh, and cause a very high damage. So start restricting the protein intake uh, and restrict yourself to 0.5 uh, grams per kg body weight. And that will allow the immune system respond very moderately or very mildly so that there is no damage happening immediately in the joints. First thing. Second, very important in case of uh, uric acid, uh, high uric acid levels, or in case of any other uh, inflammatory joint, you need to have adequate fluid in your system. Okay, hydration is very, very crucial. I, adequate hydration will make sure whatever the, uh, the oxidative component stored inside the joints will be uh, washed out from the uh, joints. That will in turn help the joints to recover faster. So first thing is the restricted protein intake and restrict the alcohol intake, restrict or uh, uh, say stop the high sweet foods. Otherwise, normal, all vegetables are okay. Rice and chia, wheat and other uh, uh, low glycemic value millets, everything are okay. And regular, say, uh, even if you're going to use the dal, uh, try to use it in the very minimal level and use the more vegetables in your uh, uh, say, uh, sambars or any other uh, thing which you want to use. And uh, otherwise, all other foods are okay. And uh, first, food restriction. Second, adequate water intake. Third, and uh, for importantly, if at all the inflammation is very severe, that there is pain in your joint, very severe pain in your joints, then start with the Oncoban for first three to five days, uh, one sachet per day in the empty stomach, and two capsules per day, that one capsule in the morning, one capsule in the night after food uh, as the uh, starting dose. After five days, when the symptom, if you feel the symptoms are still severe, you can increase it to the double the dose, two sachet per day, one in the morning after food, one in the evening after food initially, and uh, uh, two capsules in the morning after food, two capsules in the night after food. And after the next five days, when the symptoms comes down, when the pain comes down, and the, you have continued with the food restriction, then you can reduce the dose of Oncoban to one a simple one-day dose of one sachet per day in the empty stomach and uh, two capsules in the uh, in once a daily. Either it can be in the morning or in the night time, so that it will cover the whole system uh, throughout the day. And you need to continue it for about three months. Uh, say food restriction, hydration, and third is the oncoban O2. And fourth and important is the activity. Any, it's a start resting uh, periods are the uh, goal which we need to follow with uh, inflammatory arthritis. If you are going to do overdo things, 
it's going to cause more damage rather you should not rest continuously in inflammatory arthritis or else it will lead to a deformity uh, uh, deformity in the joints so you be need movement but within pain limits and there should be uh, only very short resting time don't allow the body to rest for more than about 2 hours make sure you move your joints i will teach you a simple exercises simple nine exercises which each and every person with polyarthritis uh, when the pain is not much and when the pain is controlled as, as i have directed you or guided you and you need to start with this exercise at least about 5 to 7 days after starting with oncoben and the food restriction and the pain will gradually gradually come down and what are the exercise i'll teach you right now right now itself uh, with the hands uh, uh, it's simple uh, closing of your uh, hands uh, the fingers tightly and open it tightly and spread it across don't hold it like this spread it across do it for about 20 times slow you shouldn't do it faster it should be slow hold it tight and spread it across and hold it tight close it together repeat it 20 times on both sides the first exercise second like giving a accelerator and decelerating say so see the movement the wrist is going up and down up fully and down fully do this for about 20 repetitions simple uh, make sure don't do it faster don't do it like this very slow more slower you do more pain relief you will get more the uh, tightness will go off and you will be free from moving your uh, uh, joints all the joints and the third one is the uh, we call it as supination pronation movements say uh, keep your elbow uh, straight uh, elbow in the 90 degrees show uh, arm in the uh, straight line to the body uh, you can see now one second yeah you can keep it in this position turn it fully close it we call it as pronation and open it fully for both sides both hands 20 repetitions so that there are joint there are muscles which are stiff in, in the forearm and that will make sure the joints the distal radial joint and the proximal radial joint are made looser so that you will be able to do your activities of daily living very freely and this is the third exercise and uh, fourth you need to uh, i told you this is the first acceleration and deceleration uh, second exercise same 20 repetitions for first uh, about 4 to 5 days and then you can increase the repetitions to 30 to 40 repetitions every time and third exercise i told you it's a supination and pronation exercises and fourth is the elbow flexion and extension completely extend completely flex repeat it for 20 repetitions slow but steady okay this is fourth exercise fifth is the hold your put your thumb on your shoulder joint and pedal forward pedal forward 20 times on each side right and left so once you pedal on the right side you pedal next on the left side forward 1 2 slow and it should be a full rotation 3 and 3 fully so both joints both shoulder joints 20 and 20 forward and 20 and 20 reverse this is reverse you have to pedal backwards each and every activity uh it stimulates uh, plenty of uh, uh, muscle tendons as well as it mobilizes the uh, tight synovial uh, joints synovial membrane make it lighter also and uh, uh, this uh, this is six exercises and in the lower extremity you can think it as a foot say uh, in the fingers toes so same way you have to open it close it make a a claw claw uh, foot and uh, close your toes open it and uh, straight straighten it in the in the uh, foot i am talking so uh, do that trip, uh, do that for 20 repetitions next is like a tailor say foot on right side up down 
foot. Okay, I'm just showing in hand for the convenience. Uh, so up down 20 20 repetitions. Next is sit on sit on the chair. This exercise you can do it in the lying down position itself. You can do it in the uh, on the couch itself or in the sofa or you can uh, if at all you are able to sit in the floor. Uh, put a yoga mat or a uh, say uh, we call it a spy uh, uh, or any bed sheet and do the exercises. Even you can do it in the lying down position also. Only the last exercise. Uh, the uh, the shoulder joint uh, rotation uh, last exercise you need to do it uh, uh, say uh, in the sitting posture and uh, for the uh, for the lower extremity the knee joint say bending forward bending bending it and uh, straightening it do that uh, for about 20 repetitions on both the right and left knee joints slow but steady excuse me <laughs> Meeting Lerka or Kalmar and Lichwes. Sorry. Uh, okay, uh, I told you the ninth exercise for the knee joint. So do these repetitions, uh, 20 repetitions, each exercise is slow and you have to repeat it four times daily. Uh, before breakfast, before lunch, once at the evening around five o'clock and once before your dinner, four times daily. Fifth time, if at all you're going to uh, get up in the night time for toileting purpose, do the exercises in the bed itself and go to the toilet after that. And that will make your uh, uh, activity of daily living easier and smoother. And it will reduce the pain. So uh, this is the fourth uh, component. I told you about the food restriction. I told you about the hydration, adequate hydration. Your tongue should be wet and you should be urinating uh, pale yellow urine repeatedly and throughout the day. Third is the Ankuban O2. And uh, fourth is the exercise. And fifth, very important, and uh, if at all any uh, infection is there, you have to treat it properly. Apart from that, apart from that, sunlight exposure is mandatory. Sunlight exposure for about 15 minutes to 20 minutes a day, continuously, anytime in the daytime, morning, 9 till evening, 5 o'clock, 15 minutes of sunlight exposure, particularly in your back, is very excellent. That will help you to, uh, say, develop your... Uh, immune system, modulate your immune system also. And uh, apart from that, vitamin D is synthesized adequately and your bones will get uh, strengthened up also. So here the protein restriction and high sweet intake has to be uh, taken care, keep it in your mind. This is the take home message uh, for today. So these five components you need to follow along with that, along with that, if at all, if it is a very highly, a very severe disease, very severe in, uh, and very painful, uh, start following these things. If you are unable to cope up, always uh, get the help of your uh, family doctor, family physician nearby, uh, who, who is living nearby, and they will guide you for temporary relief at least. Uh, because there is no permanent solution uh, like clear cut. There are immunoglobulins available, yes, in, uh, for uh, rheumatoid arthritis and other diseases. Whatever I have told you, uh, there is, uh, we don't have any, uh, say, specific medications. Rather, uh, other things, say whatever the lifestyle modifications need to be done, uh, food restriction, whatever the things I have advised you, uh, guided you, just take it by heart and spread the message and help people from getting relief from polyarthritis, multiple joint pains, very simply, very easily. And uh, make sure they follow the uh, Oncoban O2 dosing properly. And if the, somebody is more than about 110 kilos weight, then they need to use four capsules per day. Morning, two capsules. Night, two capsules. Morning, one sachet. Evening, one sachet. For about three months' time. Those are more than 110 or 120 kilos. Till about that weight, say, keep it as 120 as a uh, upper limit. Say, till that time, one sachet per day and uh, two capsules per day of Oncoban OT is more than enough. And for uh, it's for more, anybody more than about 14 years and more than uh, 60 kilos weight, about 120 kilos weight at the same dose and uh, make sure 
and let us create a, a pain free joint pain free world and uh, spread the message of what is polyarthritis and how how we need to uh, control it how we can manage it easily very simply also that will help them to start earning their um, uh, say income say polyarthritis will crumple the person from restricting them to go to any activity or any job so uh, help them uh, with uh, all vividos family members help them uh, people with uh, polyarthritis make them uh, say uh, productive let them start earning let them start uh, generating income for themselves and for, and for their family and ultimately uh, we are creating a, a very uh, say productive uh, environment very quality environment quality people who can be uh, say supporting the development of their family also and the personal growth uh, is always uh, uh, important for everyone every human being and uh, and restricting the polyarthritis restricting the growth uh, is taken care with the help of o2 oncobano2 and of course health education is mandatory whatever we educate it is for a, it should be a complete one not only focus only on the product educate them adequately so that people will get relieved of uh, uh, the joint pains and come back to normalcy that's what we want to create a joint pain free world all the best namaste namaskar thank you thank you dr chella for this wonderful session on polyarthritis the symptoms do confuse people but today you have imparted us the knowledge on how we can differentiate the symptoms and treat the patient accordingly there is a lot of education that you have imparted us throughout this lockdown i personally thank the management for giving us this opportunity and especially dr chella to take out your time to educate us and to uh, you know make us more capable in uh, helping us to promote the product your vision is our mission thank you doctor thank you so much nice. and i would like i thank would you. like to thank you doctor i would like to take this opportunity to thank the entire management of vivitos wellness private limited and our creative team under the able guidance of dr hussein dakni and our crown diamond dr mohammad munawar for giving me this opportunity to be an mc for today's session not only that much my friends we have heard uh, heard from dr chella about how we can treat about polyarthritis uh, something a disease which is very silent and probably we will not know until it reaches its zenith so using our vivitos health supplements we not not only we are able to treat ourselves we are able to even treat our loved ones with any kind of diseases saying this i would like to 